We're getting to the end of the 2022 fishing season, but it's not over yet. Stick around for the latest from this week's weekly video fishing forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is November 17th, and in this week's digital edition, it's all about the late season stripers. Check out my article on how I hunt for late season bass, and Jerry Odette has his own game plan for the end of the season as well. Check out these great reads and more, only digital edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Remember, $29.95 gets you 12 glossy print issues and all the weekly digital content, plus full access to the website too. And best of all, you can compete in our Dreamboat and Coastal Kayak Clash contest. You may think you've protected your outboard or personal watercraft for the winter, but you're not done yet. Fully protect your investment, you need to fight corrosion and remove all the water in the power head and cooling system. Winterizing Pro does just that. The innovative foaming action penetrates and expands in the cooling system, giving you the ultimate protection and peace of mind that your engine is safe over the freezing winter months. Get your Winterize It Pro now from MarineMate.com. I received multiple phone calls and emails about the Manitouk and Hashinomic Pond waterway access site ramps being removed the last week out on the North Fork of the island. Both of these ramps were still seeing active use for tog, stripers, and albie fishing. Being a user of these ramps myself, I made the effort to attend a recent fisheries meeting to get an answer. The DEC let me know that a position change led to some misinformation about the ramps. So when they should typically be pulled, so they expressed their apologies to me and the public for this happening and assured this won't happen next year. Please be mindful of this if you had a trip planned involving these ramps during the remainder of the 2023 season. Another Thanksgiving weekend tradition on the island coming up next week is the Fisherman's Flea Market in Lindenhurst. Saturday, November 26th is the date and the time is 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Get all the details by visiting thefisherman.com slash events or click on the card in the top right. Yo Zuri has a new deadly lure out soon and we recently published a video on YouTube demonstrating the effectiveness on this lure in Montauk. Check out this exciting feature by uh, clicking on the card in the top right. Lure from Don't forget this video is available as a podcast on iTunes and Google Podcasts. Search for the Fisherman Magazine podcast and subscribe so you can listen to the broadcast. Let's take a look at the map and I'll tell you what I've been hearing around the island. To the west, the waters in and around Sandy Hook are alive and kicking with action. Party and charter boats are limiting out on slot fish. As you head east to the Rockaways, Atlantic Beach and the waters between Jones and Debs Inlet and the State Boat Channel have all seen regular scores on slots and over slots. The bass have eagerly responded to live line bunker, poppers, bucktails, mojos, and umbrella rigs. If you want sea bass, they're making their way out to the deeper water offshore wrecks also. Black fishing in the bays has been very good at the local bridges and on green crabs. Along the central south shore, Murchis Bay, Inlet, and Great South Bay, and in the Inlet, plus the ocean is still loaded with stripers. In fact, the north side of the Great South Bay is playing host to oversized fish, keepers, and shorts. Also inside the Great South Bay by Fire Island, it's loaded with tog, but keepers are hard to come by. As the water cools, the ocean pieces should get a bit better also. To the east, Montauk is loaded with smaller bass and bluefish in the local rips and around the point. I did hear of a good bite of them from the north side of the point from the surf around Shagwan. But bottom fishing was business as usual with tog up to 10 pounds and sea bass up to 5 with slot cod making their way into the coolers near Block and Fishers Island. Along the North Shore, bass and blues can be found from the Western Harbors all the way out to the North Fork on Sound Beaches. Albies were also being caught again from the North Fork surf uh, last week. Sea bass were active on the deeper rocky pieces to the North Fork as well. And for the squid fans, they stuck around another week inside and outside the harbors on squid jigs from Hempstead all the way out to Mount Sinai. Rich, the weatherman, is back from a fishing trip that included a trip to upstate New York and Rhode Island. Rich, how is this weekend's weather looking? Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check that weekend forecast and see what we got going on. You can always check your favorite apps, uh, weather tools, weather sites, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend. So water temps, 50s, 60s, holding on a bit, but starting to come down a little now. Wave height Saturday, it's a 2 to 4, 4 to 8 east. 
A general westerly breeze about 10 to 20, so chopped up. The farther west you go, you protect it a little bit towards East Rockaway. The Rockaway is off the Jersey coast, but east of Fire Island Inlet out to Mauritius, south to Shinnecock and Montauk, going to be a little rougher. And then a little break Saturday evening, but then right back to very gusty winds from the west on Sunday. A little wave starts to form there. The 4 to 8, 8 to 12 start to come back from east to west. Even the sound's going to be a little bit riled up here throughout the day. So, uh, you know, future cast, westerly breeze, 10 to 20. It's manageable Saturday, but a little choppy, also a little on the cold side. And then towards Sunday midday, quickly afternoon, we get this wave. Look at the winds go 20 to 30. It's going to really start to get nasty here with that cold breeze, too. High tide Saturday, North Shore about 7, 8 a.m., South Shore for the mid-afternoon. Look at these highs on Saturday, you know, low 40s and even close to 40 on Sundays. Things start to get uh, quite chilly again. Here's the Guru on Saturday, and again, confirming a lot of westerly here. The waves generally two to four higher east of Fire Island, up to four to seven there. And everybody on Sunday, this is just going to be kind of a blowout day. You know, west 20 to 30, gust to 35, and waves start to really get up there. So just uh, be safe this weekend if you're going to be out and about, especially in the ocean. Very choppy, gusty, and also on the cold side. Stay warm, but catch them up. Do the best you can. Matt, back to you. Now let's check in with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim. Thank you, Matt. Well, greetings everybody from Montauk. I uh, haven't been around for the last couple of weeks, kind of been busy doing stuff besides fishing, you know? It's funny to think that there's something else going on in life besides fishing, but Montauk's been really good. Uh, when the weather's been cooperating, everything's been totally and completely um, firing on all cylinders. Um, the, the beach fishing for the bass is starting to kick in. We're having a lot of fish on the north side. I think they're still kind of pulling out of the bay and working their way around the point. Um, there's definitely been some fish on the south side as well. A lot of schoolie stripers, anything from, you know, 20 inches up to 36, you know, boiling in the surface, which has been good. Um, sea bass and blackfish has been going really well. Most of the guys are moving out towards uh, Southwest Ledge, Block Island area. And because of that, they're getting some consistent codfish in the mix too. So that's been a nice thing. Other than that, everybody's getting ready to kind of wind it down here, but I have a feeling December is going to still be pretty good. Um, water temperature's not really dropping that fast yet, so hopefully after this week, I know we're going to have a lot of wind, but um, you know, maybe right by Thanksgiving when the winds calm down, people get back out. But I think we'll be bass fishing and doing some other stuff right into uh, early December. All right, everybody, I'm getting ready to go back to my home away from home, Ishkalak, down in Mexico, do some permit bone fishing. I'll have some reports coming up from there. And next week, we'll see you for Thanksgiving. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Uh, fishing does seem to be winding down, although I'm not packing my stuff in just yet. Uh, yesterday, got <laughs> treaded diaper stripers, just about every cast, sitting right in the lip on, uh, on a small bucktail. Still good to bend a rod, and definitely would uh, come February in the, the dark times of winter, I'd be more than happy to catch them. Just uh, thought this fall run might be have a little more oomph to it around here. Back in the bay, a couple of bigger fish, and um, you know, right place at the right time. Does seem that outgoing tide is that warmer bay water, um, you know, starts to move. Is you know, the fish that are in there tend to you know, kind of um, you know, be on the chew a little bit. Not seeing a whole lot in terms of birds working organics like I had last week, but other friends of mine have you know, seen them here or there. So, you know, have heard of some fish that are like between Southampton and Amagansett, so they got to swing by the neighborhood and hopefully we'll be able to to get something in front of them at the right time and get into those guys you know with the wind and and the weather it's been a little tough by boat for too many people to get out so not a lot of reports um on that uh blackfish you know kind of the same predicament although a couple of head boats have gotten out had a few trips shinnecock star hampton lady and uh they continue to have you know some pretty nice catch of uh of you know nice size tog uh the sea bass seems to be the big story where they really are kind of chewing their heads off and a lot of spots back in uh in Marich's bay more to the west of Marich's inlet um able to get into a you know a couple of bass so it's not over it almost is <laughs> so don't waste any time get out there and fish let us know how you did back to you matt Let's take a quick break and get the latest from the Dreamboat and Coastal Kayak Clash as both contests are getting close to the end.
And now for the Fisherman's Dreamboat Challenge standings as of November 17th. We are just 14 days away from the dramatic conclusion. We start out with a new Tautog first place entry by Bill DaCosta of Massapequa, New York. His 13.65 pound beast combined with his previous fifth place fluke entry gives him 16 points and gets Bill a spot on the standings board, pushing Dean Paella off the board. First place contestant Sam Dibner now has 42 points. Second place contestant Rob Carrozano has 23 points. And third place contestant Garrett Weir has 19 points. We also confirm the October fish of the month, which is bluefish. Sam Dibner's 16.75 pound blue dog clinches the October prizes. Stay tuned. Who will win? Will the standings change? Come back next week for another update. And for the Coastal Kayak Clash, there are no new entries, so it's still Justin Oster in first. Bob Wagner in second, and Tom Howd in third. From Northport, we have the Cal Harbor Bait and Tackle Report. You love fishing, this is the time to get out. It's been a fantastic bite. The chew inside the harbor, if you're a surf cast or a boat guy, it doesn't matter, it's been fantastic. The birds are just following the, the fish up and down the harbor. These bass and the bluefish, nice, beautiful large bluefish, um, are on the fish and uh, are on the squid. They've got the peanut bunker and the adult bunker pinned in some areas. And um, I'll tell you, it's the time to get out there and look for that change of the tide. Also want to give a big thank, thank you to our family traditional fishing trip for my birthday on Monday. We're out with James Joseph and Kat and put us on the fish and walked away with my Togzilla, won the pool and then uh, kept it alive and was able to release it. So say, hey, thanks man for such a wonderful birthday celebration. It was a, a really great time. Go out, support the Fahir fleet. Uh, surfcasters, get out there, get your feet wet. This is the time to go. It's such an exciting time of the year coming off the moon, nasty, wet weather. Go out there and have some fun and as always be safe and i bid you all peace and tight lines from the fire island area in great south bay let's check in with captain al Barnzetti. hey matt uh fishing fire island it's red hot right now the bass fishing is crazy good inside and outside when you can get out there it looks like a little bit of tough weather for this weekend blowing hard but should be able to fish inshore uh, we had striped bass on fire, in Fire Island from the inlet all the way back to Ocean Beach on bait and plugs. So pretty much any place you're going to drop in, you're going to have a, a good chance of catching some nice fish. And most are slot fish, a few over and uh, quite a few and a bunch under. But uh, I would say more than 50% of the fish are right in the slot. So, I, so fishing is excellent. Black fishing also excellent by the Moses Bridge. Uh, very consistent. Uh, you catch a lot of shorts, but every session yields a couple of nice big keepers, you know, four to six pound fish. So that's still working good. So it's a matter of beating the weather, getting out there, finding the window. So that's about it, Matt, for this week. Talk to you next week. With our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Wow. Unbelievable. 70 degrees one day and bam, 40 degrees the next. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's crazy. The water's still pretty warm, so I still expect there's still going to be a few fish around. Quite a few fish, actually, because I saw them. I decided to come down. Uh, we came down to uh, the local state park by me, Jones Beach, and decided to fish the inlet, and I also tried fishing the uh, uh, the front with my two-handed rod. I mean, it was perfect. There was a dropping tide. Uh, it was a northeast wind, so it was at my back, my casting. So I got to practice with my casting rod, and that's the word, practice. I did see a lot of fish, but they were way out of range of any guys on, this, on the shore. Uh, even in the inlet, lots of fish, breaking, birds diving. If you were in a boat, you did pretty good. I wasn't, so I didn't catch anything. I did have a few shad that came up, but not much. Anyway, as far as uh, the freshwater scene, Connecticut doing very, very well. Uh, I've been hearing from the vets. Uh, they were out there on, uh, on uh, Veterans Day. Uh, great, great time. Um, they all caught fish. The rivers did, every, all the rivers did come up, which is a good thing, because that means there's water in the system uh, because of the rain, we're, and we expect rain again tonight. Upstate, not so good. Uh, as far as the, the rivers, 
they're pretty pretty blown out right now. So I would give it a few a few days uh, and keep an eye on it. And you can fish it. It's they're fishing well when they're when the water's good. Uh, the Salmon River. All I'm hearing is steelhead is starting to move in a lot more every day. The lower part seems to be doing pretty good. They're also still catching cohos up by above Pineville. Um, and then, of course, there are a lot of zombies in the river. Uh, so this is a little bit of late of a season. But, hey, this has been a strange year weather-wise. But I'm going to keep going. I hope to, this weekend to get out on the beach if the wind is right. If not, I'll have to use my spinning gear. <laughs> so until next week, tie lines, everybody. From the Rockaways, we have Chris Landry. Chris. Thanks, Matt. Striped bass fishing continues to be strong in Jamaica Bay, Rockaway, and the surrounding areas. Although it does seem like the abundance of bigger fish are moving on, you still can get big fish, but it's not like every other cast how it was the last couple weeks. Um, big fish were pushed back into the back of the bay. We are getting slot 30 to 35 inch bass on spooks. Uh, back by JFK a few days ago, but we went back today and couldn't find them. We did find a bunch of schoolies blitzing on about a thousand birds outside of Coney Island. We were getting them on spooks again. Uh, last week I showed you a one ounce Yozuri spook, but this might be my new favorite spook, a two ounce canal bait. Looks just like a bunker, has a rattle, and I love the single hook at the end for easy release. Um, we have been getting bigger fish uh, outside of uh, Breezy Point, but it's a it's a more difficult bite lately. Uh, the tog bite is still strong. The A team did their annual charter on the Gypsy over the weekend, and they slammed the tog, getting tog up to ten pounds, and the pool winner took home sixteen hundred dollars. All right, so uh, we got a couple more weeks to be getting on these bass before they move down south. There will be some stragglers, especially in the back of the bay. And the next week looks terrible weather-wise, so pick your window carefully. Be safe out there, and uh, tight lines, and back to you, Matt. Let's check in with Max Finch from the Connecticut side of the Western Sound. Striped bass fishing this past week has been nothing but exceptional. The bass are feeding along our beaches with all the peanut bunker now well on our sandy beaches and leaving the rivers and the estuaries. The hot spots have been off like Bridgeport, the mouth of the Housatonic, you know, the Nauk Islands, Campo Beach, Sherwood Island area. And to our west, we've heard some really good feeds too. There's been bass off Captain's Island, down to City Island, and guys are really getting some nicer fish now on the diamond jigs. Diamond jig in like 11B, and then way to our west, Execution Rock, and to our east, Middle Ground. With herring, hopefully we see a good influx in them starting to come in this winter. That will drive some bigger fish, you know, the last of the bigger fish to stay out in the sound. Guys do really well diamond jigging these deep water spots. Along our beaches, throwing, you know, stuff like small super strike poppers, small spooks, small soft plastics. Albie snacks is always a popular one to throw. It really imitates a peanut bunker really well, and don't overlook your spoons. Black fishing, we've, we've seen some nice fish, but I feel like the bite is really starting to tend to a really good wreck bite right now. So guys that are getting on top of some wrecks in like that 40 to 60 feet, I've seen some really nice fish to like 8, 9 pounds. Guys fishing shallow, they're, they're getting some nice ones too, but you really got to pick through a lot of shorts. With all this cold weather, it should really get the black fish, uh, you know, biting really good. We're going to have, you know, fully stocked of crabs all the way to the end of the month. Thanks and good luck. Captain Mike Sentry has the latest from Staten Island. Thanks, Tim and Matt Hopewell as well. Hey guys, Mike Sentry here from Anglers of Legends Sport Fish and Boat Works. Well, I want to give you guys a little tip. Having a hard time trying to catch bass, especially this late in the season, match the hatch, small little poppers. I always say match the hatch, small little poppers, small little shads. Go down to some of these tackle shops and you can see that this bad boy here is $2.50. I mean, there's a bin in most tackle shops this time of year where they want to get rid of stuff. So you go find creek chubs and all shapes and slices uh, for the year-end clearance that they're going on. Uh, what else? Straight bass. Uh, pretty much they're catching uh, anything from 25 inches all the way up to 32 inches. When you see striped bass that small, uh, pretty much signifies the uh, end of the run is, is approaching. You're looking probably close to December, if not the first week of December. It's going to be a wrap for most charters and recreational fishermen. Those that are still on the water, remember temperatures are dropping. If you have outboards, make sure you leave your outboards tilted down in the water. 
get that water from your block into the water. You don't want your block cracking from the freezing temperatures. Uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Just getting ready for the season, uh, wrapping stuff up for next year. Uh, just trying to catch up with work, a lot of work. It's been a great season. I hope you guys uh, had a great time. Uh, Tog in New Jersey opened up. I believe the fish limit is five now. So you call the weather anglers, want to get out there and give it a try. By all means, <laughs> you go, not me. <laughs> I'm staying put. Well, guys, back to you, Matt. God bless. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and their social media pages. Let's hope we get a break from the wind and the cold this weekend before the season comes to a close. We'll see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.